Hello everyone and welcome back to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to prepare beef barbacoa in the oven. Barbacoa is traditionally prepared in a pit or an outdoor oven. It's slowly cooked overnight or until the meat is nice and tender and it falls apart easily. To prepare this recipe we're going to use about 7 to 8 pounds of beef. I'm going to use a combination of boneless chuck roast and a few beef shanks to add more flavor to the dish. You can also use beef cheeks. Cut the boneless chuck roast into smaller pieces to make it easier to arrange in the pot. Then generously season with salt. Set it aside while we prepare the rest of the ingredients for the sauce. To prepare the sauce, we're going to need 4 to 5 chiles morita. Morita peppers are a type of chipotle pepper made from smoked red ripe jalapeno peppers. These do pack quite a bit of heat, so if you don't want it too spicy, you can use less. We're also going to need an entire head of garlic peeled. Six to seven chile guajillos. These I remove the stems and I also remove the seeds. Half a white onion roughly chopped. And for seasonings, I'm going to use half a tablespoon of peppercorns, one tablespoon of coriander seeds, one tablespoon of whole cumin, one teaspoon of thyme, six to eight allspice berries, one tablespoon of Mexican oregano, three to four bay leaves, four to five dry avocado leaves, and half a cup of apple cider vinegar or regular vinegar. If you missed the ingredients, I'm also going to leave a full list of all the ingredients used in the description of this video. Before blending the ingredients for the sauce, I'm going to lightly fry them in a little bit of oil. Add in the onion first and fry for about a minute before adding the rest of the ingredients. Once you add in the peppers and the garlic, move them frequently so they don't burn. By doing this step, it's going to enhance the flavors of the peppers and the rest of the ingredients. And it's going to give us a more flavorful sauce. Once they start to release that delicious aroma, add in the beef broth and bring to a boil. Then turn off the burner and cover for about 15 minutes or until the peppers become pliable. In Mexico, traditional barbacoa is prepared with lamb, goat, or beef. The meat is wrapped in maguey leaves and it's slowly cooked to perfection in an outdoor pit. But since we don't have the option of making an outdoor pit, we're going to cook it in the oven. And to wrap the meat, we're going to use banana leaves. but first we're going to run them over an open flame to make them pliable and easier to fold. Barbacoa is usually very easy to throw together. You can even do it before you head to work and have it waiting for you when you get home. You can also prepare it in a slow cooker or prepare it in an Instapot and have it ready within an hour. Now that the banana leaves are ready, we can move on to the preparation of the sauce. Let me grab those chiles from the stove. And at this point, they're still a little bit hot, but we're gonna go ahead and move on to with the process. Transfer the peppers, the garlic, and the onion to the blender. And very carefully add in the broth from the pan. Add in your seasonings. And the vinegar. I'm also going to add a couple tablespoons of chicken bouillon to add more flavor to the sauce. And then we're going to place it on the blender for about a minute or two or until it's nice and smooth. Next, we're going to add a layer of the banana leaves to the pot. The clay pot that I'm using is oven safe. We're going to add a nice layer of the banana leaves, making sure to overlap a few of the banana leaves so we can cover the meat at the end.
The sauce, you can choose to strain it, but the blender does such a great job of blending the sauce, I'm not gonna strain it. I'm just gonna add it directly into the pot. I'm gonna add a layer of the sauce, a couple of bay leaves, and a couple avocado leaves. Then we're gonna add a layer of the beef over the sauce. Then we're gonna add another layer of the sauce, more avocado leaves, and bay leaves. This time we're gonna add in the beef shanks. And we're gonna fill the holes with a few pieces of the beef. Next, we're gonna add another layer of the sauce. A couple more bay leaves. And then we're gonna layer with the remainder of the meat. And then we're gonna pour the remainder of the sauce over the meat. Top it off with the rest of the avocado and bay leaves. And then we're gonna fold over the banana leaves to cover the meat, making sure that it's completely covered with the banana leaves. At this point, your oven should be preheated to 375 degrees. Lastly, we're going to cover very tightly with aluminum foil. And before we place it in the oven, I'm going to place a large cookie sheet to set the pot over the cookie sheet. This way it will catch any spillage during the cooking time. And we're going to bake at 375 degrees for five to six hours. It may take longer depending on your oven and your pot. The meat has been cooking for about five hours. At this point, we're gonna remove it from the oven and we're gonna check it to see if it's done. If you decide to leave this cooking while you head to work, I would set it at 350 degrees and cook for about eight to nine hours. If this is your first time here, Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future recipes like this one. If the meat is still a little bit hard and it doesn't fall apart easily, place it back in the oven for another one to two hours. Which that was the case for us, so we did place it back in the oven. After seven hours of cooking time, this meat is now ready. And as you can see, the meat is falling apart very easily. I'm gonna transfer the meat to an oven safe pot. This way, if it needs reheating, we can just place it in the oven for a few minutes. Or we can leave it in the oven to keep it warm. With the amount of ingredients we used, we had plenty of leftovers, which you can use to make quesadillas, gorditas, tacos, tostadas. This recipe is also great for parties or any other special occasions that you may have coming up.
Once I get the dough for my outdoor oven, I'm definitely going to try this recipe outside. If you decide to prepare this recipe in your home, leave us a comment to let us know what you think of this recipe. And if you're enjoying watching this video, I would really appreciate if you would leave a like so we can continue to share more recipes like this one. Thank you so much for watching and make sure to join us in our next video for another delicious recipe.